Hello, my noble couple here, and welcome to my tutorial on how to build stock propellers. Now, there's a few things um, that you need to know. Everything in here is 100% stock. The only mod I have installed is Kerbal Engineer, and all that does is the math for you. Um, it doesn't add any parts or any affect any gameplay. All it does is help you with math. Uh, the other thing is, I'm when using my offset tool here, so if I just quickly grab two parts, when using my offset tool here, um, I might be moving stuff further than what you can see here. The way you do that is you hit shift and voila, as you can see, moving it a lot further. This is very important. Uh, and the third thing is, uh, if I just come down here, grab, where is it? Oh, I clicked every tab but the one. If I hit X and that adds the mirror, the cemetery tool, and I keep hitting X, I can only add the two. However, if I hit R, that changes the cemetery, and I can add up to eight, I think it is. Yeah, eight. This is very important. You will be needing this a lot. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. So I already have my cockpit here. First things first is you need a separator. This allows um, your propeller and engine to become a separate vessel from, um, uh, from your main body of the aircraft. That's very important. Now you need the torque. To get the torque, I add five inline stabilizers, if it'll click on to the separator. You can add more or less, up to you. Uh, you need a uh, sorry, you need a remote guidance unit. This allows it to then keep spinning once it has become a separate vessel. And for that also to work, you need electricity. So I come to electricity and add some RTGs. Again, hitting that R tool. Uh, allows me to add four. I just like having it nice and symmetrical. Don't know why. It's just just me. And you can just offset them all the way in. Then you come down to aerodynamics and add your small nose cone. And voila. That is the basic of the propeller. I add the actual blades as the very last thing. Now what you want to do is get your move tool or offset. Click on your nose cone. Hit shift. Move it all the way out. Uh, when you move it out, it is important that you don't move it up and down or across. You need it directly in line. What you need then is to click on the separator and hit shift. Move it up. Doesn't matter how far. I just like to have it above the uh, cockpit. And then move your torque, your uh, stabilizers down so they're in line again. And then I like to move them out a bit. Because... The way it needs to spin and stay attached to the aircraft is you need a hinge. So let's get building that. Let's build the hinge. English is working perfectly for me today. So, like I said before, you need the R button again. And you need to add the max you can. And then turn them so they come out looking like this. And I make it so there's just a teeny little gap between them. That is the basic hinge. Now, you need something to spin inside of said hinge. So you come down to Command and Control, grab your Place Anywhere port, and chuck that on front, and use your cemetery to get all them, and get them in line. If you can't get them in line, just turn your cemetery on to two, and voila, and then you can just spam it, and see how it doesn't move. That is what you want. Then you turn it around, and have it like that. Now, this is the important part. You need to then get your offset tool, click on that, now hit shift. You need to be using shift. And you need to drag that so it's inside the um, bulb. Uh, so that's inside them. Now you might need to turn it off the octagon snap thing, I don't know the technical name for that, sorry. And you want to be moving that in as close as possible so the port there is not touching the cockpit. And that's about right there. Now you want to do the same with your thermometers. You want to move them as close as possible without touching. And same thing, if, if, they, if they're in like that and they're touching the bulb, it won't work. They need to be out just a little, little bit. And to me, that there is fine. That is fine. Now, when this starts spinning, it generates thrust. And if there's nothing stopping it, it will just fly away from the aircraft. So what you need next is a buffer. So I grab um, 
this one, the octagon strut, and I just place that bad boy, uh, making sure you got that on there so it's directly in the middle, you don't want it off center, and turn it, and what you do next is you come down and grab this adapter. You then put that adapter on the front of your strut there, and using your move tool, you move that all the way, holding shift again, and move it down. Now, if you don't want that strut there seen, you can just simply just move that down, but make sure you move this back up. Now, you want to do the hinge thing again. So if you need to bring this forward, that, that's more than fine. And again, you come down the science, grab your thermometers, uh, using the R button to change it to radial, and voila, there you go. And just make it the same thing again, max, make it a, a circle, nice circle like that, and there you go. Now you want to do the same thing with the place anywhere ports again, and you want to place them on this bad boy here. Now if you can't get it in line like that, you can just turn it off and then get the two, and then just spam the bad boy, see how it doesn't move, and then flip it over, and there you go. Now same thing again, you want to move your buffer, it's very important that you move the buffer, not the propeller. You move the buffer here, so it slides over the RCS port like that. And again, you want it as close as possible, so the RCS is not touching the buffer, and, th and the thermometers are not touching the um, propeller. That is very important, otherwise it won't work. And like so, and that is not touching that. Perfect. There you go. Now, sometimes when you place the buffer, it might be off center a bit, it might be like that. It's very important that you move the buffer, not the propeller. That's very important. And now you can just move your nose cone back. Again, don't touch, not touching it, but you can move it pretty close, like that. Now you need the blades. So I'm just gonna use this one, aileron two and hit the so it's on the snap that's the best and i'm just going to add say f uh four nice number and move them so they're even like that and so that they're facing up and down because it's just easy to work with then you want to get your offset tool and you just want to move them out they don't have to be all the way out like that they they, they uh they can be touching and i like to move them forward a little bit then you want to get your rotate tool now I found the best um, position for my blades, uh, if you're looking on this one here, just grab the orange one and go one, two. So that's two ticks down, you will have to have your snap on and don't hit shift for that. And that for me is the best angle for the blades. And so there you go, that is your propeller. I'm just going to quickly build the rest of my aircraft and then I'll show you how to fly it. Okay, so if you have built your aircraft, it doesn't have to look like mine, you can build it however you want. I did forget to mention, when you put the blades on, you want to turn them off, roll, yaw, and pitch. That helps a lot. Now, the way you get it to spin is you hit Alt and E. And if you come down to the bottom left, you can see over where it says roll, this orange bar down up over here is moving all the way to the right. That is what you want. Now, when, I've got brakes on, so it probably won't move when we turn the brakes, uh, when we let it go. But then you want to hit space. That'll activate that separate thing. And that propeller becomes its own thing, its own separate vessel. So you can switch to it. You can switch to the propeller. 
and you can switch back. That normally explodes. It makes really cool explosions. Anyway, as you can see, we still have the aircraft um, trimmed, and that's just going to roll on its own. So what you want to do is hit Alt-X. That cancels the trim. It doesn't affect the propeller because it's now its own separate vehicle. And we can turn the brakes off. If you have, um, you can hit F1 or whatever button you have it to, and you can see all those yellow lines. That is what you want. That is what is making the thrust and pulling us through the air. Uh, you want to hit T as well. That just helps stabilize the aircraft. And there you go. As you can see, the propeller is the only source of thrust that is giving this aircraft lift. And it's pretty fast as well. I mean, they're not going to be as fast as jets. But, I mean, we're already at 60 meters per second. That's decent. That's quite good, actually. My fastest um, prop plane was 95 meters per second. I will leave a link to this aircraft and that aircraft in the description once I figure out how to do that. So you guys can download it if you want to um, fly around with these aircraft. Now, if, if they're not flying steady for you like this, you can just hit Alt and Q and turn that until it is flying level. And there you go. That's how you use trim. Now, a disclaimer. Sometimes these propellers here, they do tend to explode or they do tend to just slip out and just fly off by themselves and leave you gliding. Um, so yeah, it's not 100% foolproof. But as you can see, I've been, I've been pulling some pretty, pretty tight maneuvers, or as tight as I can, and they've been fine. So yeah, um, I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, if you have, please leave a like in this, um, like, comment. Um, tell me how I did. Again, this is my first tutorial, uh, so I hope I uh, conveyed all the information nice, clearly, and understandable, and I hope you guys have built your propellers. If they're not working, just leave me a comment, and I will try and help. Uh, like I said again, this is just the way that I build my propellers, um, because it works for me. It might not work for you, but a different way might work for you. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy, and happy flying!